Ah, yes. So, uh, one of my favorite writers, um, oh, in the past ten years or so, has been Chuck Klosterman. And we've been trying to get him on the show for five years. Um, and it's been it's been difficult. It's like, uh, you know, tracking down a spy or something uh, to get him on the show. And finally, we get him on his latest essay, uh, collection of essays. It's called Eating the Dinosaur, which is a, a, just a, a, a terrific... Uh, terrific book, um, filled with a lot of really interesting and funny and entertaining essays. And finally, we uh, we get to talk to Chuck live, and Chuck Klosterman is on the phone. Hi, Chuck. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm doing okay. How are you doing, Ken? I'm good. Uh, you wrote an essay uh, about football in the in yeah. the in the in the book in the book as well. And uh, I just came back tonight from seeing a play at a local theater company here in Chicago called 1985. And it's uh, it's it takes all everything from Orwell's 1984, and makes an alternate um, uh, universe here in Chicago during the bear season of 1985. Okay. And instead of Big Brother, it's Papa Bear George Hallis watching everyone, uh, and uh, it's the Bear Nation. And uh, you know you can't be a Green Bay Packers fan or you go to Room 101. If I you... have to say, this place sounds terrible. <laughs> It was actually really good, but it's about insane football fans. And uh, what... uh, well, yeah, I mean, I guess it, maybe it's great. I, I feel like now the guy who wrote the play by listening to this radio and he thinks, "Why is he attacking my play?" He hasn't seen it. The way you describe it, though, it sounds more like a skit. No, it, well, it, they actually do. They actually, I mean, it, it actually is fleshed out pretty well, and they hit all the they hit all the marks. It's loaded with a lot of references that Chicago fans, particularly Bear and Cub fans, will adore. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not yeah. like the most widely like somebody from Dubuque is going to come in and go, "What the hell is this?" But, but Chicago has Chicago does have good sports fans. There's oh yeah, no question about that. They're, they 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 tend to be particularly loyal, and and when I when I mean loyal, I mean they really do stick with teams during bad periods. I mean, compared to somewhere like Philadelphia. Oh God! You know, I mean, it's it's really weird. I think you know, on the on the East Coast, fans are very, very um, you know unforgiving and sort of cruel to their team, and they're really they're intense, but they have very you know mixed in, you know expectations. On the West Coast, they're just not as big a sports fan. Yeah, like they just you know it's like Laker fans. Uh, just you know, I was at a bar one time when the Lakers were in the finals and they were playing the Nets, and everyone in the bar was sort of watching the opening tip and the ball tip, and people in the bar raised their glasses and were like, "Woo!" And then they immediately quit watching it. <laughs> like three seconds in, but so only kind of in the Midwest can there be fans who are as intense, sort of, as say Philadelphia or Boston fans, but who are also kind of reasonable people. Yeah, you know, who aren't going to throw batteries at Santa Claus. Or <laughs> Well, there's, it was funny. There was an obit in the local paper yesterday. There's this guy who was 95 years old. Uh, he died on Monday at the age of 95, and he was a lifelong Cub fan, and we know how that always turns out. And they have a picture of him in his 90s with a Cub hat on, full Cub you know, paraphernalia everywhere. And in his death notice, he had this written, uh, Go Cubs, I waited as long as I could, <laughs> which yeah. I think sums up you know, being a Cub I'm fan. Deaf. Funny dead guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that, that, if you're ever going to choose a time to be funny, the best time would be your open. I mean, that really is leaving them wanting more. You're, you're at your peak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like that's it. Like Show's if you over. Come up with a funny tombstone. That would be. This is my whole goal. I've just realized now is to come up with a funny tombstone. That's the ultimate win. Well, are you a hypochondriac? No, because you're. Because if you were, your tombstone could say, "I told you I was sick." Uh, See, there you go. I'm, I'm just going. That's, that's, I heard that Johnny Carson told that joke. I think in 1974. 